And good morning and welcome to another Sunday Bible study. I am Reverend Parker here at Community Baptist Church. Thank you again for joining us, allowing us to come into your breakfast breakfast class. <laughs> yes, having that toast and coffee and that tea, I know. Oh, that you're on your knees. Yes, bending down to God and praying to him, lifting up the name of Jesus. We want to welcome you to another Palm Sunday. That's right. We want to say thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to be here to see another Palm Sunday because God is good to us. Amen. God has made a way out of no way for each and every one of us. And we want to thank you for allowing us just to be here again. Amen. Just to, just to, uh, Come into your home and share the good news of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Because God is the true living God. He is the true living God, and Jesus is his Son. Amen. And so as we get into our lesson today, we ask you to we, we want to thank all of those who continue to give to the uh, building of the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, here at Community Baptist Church. And we have a safe and secure site for you, and it's cbcsr.org giving. You can't beat God in giving, and so we want to continue to give unto the Lord. Amen. Give. Do your best. You know you have it, and so just give back uh, unto the Lord. Amen. Because the Lord loves a cheerful giver, and you can't beat God in giving. Amen. Because he gave his best. Amen. And so we want to just continue to uh, give. Um, we want to also welcome, uh, ask you to join us Friday uh, for Good Friday uh, that's coming up uh, later in the week. And we just ask <laughs> that you come share that time with us at 6 p.m. It'll be 6 p.m. I know it says a little later on the website, but it will be at 6 p.m. So make sure you join us for that. And we got so, a good word, the some utterance of Christ. And the men of God will bring uh, the word to you. Amen. And so we got a big surprise for you too. Amen. And so just come on in and join us. And as we ask you to continue to pray for all of those on our sick and shut in list, and there'll be many names. And if you know someone who's already been healed, uh, we ask that you uh, call us up and let us know so that we can remove their name and move somebody else up in there. Amen. Uh, we actually continue to pray for our pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. H. Lee Turner, uh, pray, pray for direction, healing, and uplifting, and continue uh, healing. You know, he's still healing, but he's doing well, um, and uh, we, we would love for you to just continue to lift him up unto the Lord, amen, and his family, amen, for a hedge of protection around them all, amen. We actually pray for uh, Sister Diane Ruff for physical and spiritual healing, Brother Bernal Terrell for healing from a kidney transplant, Sister Jasmine Cuffey for healing of an illness, uh, the Stahl family at the passing of Charles Stahl, uh, the Harris family for blessing and direction, uh, Brother Derek uh, Rendikis for uh, comfort and peace, Brother Mike R Ramirez, for physical healing and comfort, and John and Margie uh, Gayton for healing and protection, and many others. You know those who uh, need prayer. Uh, just continue to lift them up unto a God who truly loves us and who truly cares, and we'll continue to uh, lift you up also. Amen. Jesus said, if he be lifted up, uh, he'll draw all men unto him. Amen. And so we need to make sure that we are continually praying for one another. And um, as we move along in this uh, Sunday's Bible study, we're going to have Brother Jim Kennedy uh, read scripture, and then we're going to have our own uh, Pastor H.D. Turner pray. Amen. The scripture will be from Romans 5, 6 through 10. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, or perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God showed his love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by the blood, much more shall we uh, be saved by him from the wrath of God. 
For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. And blessing be to the end of reading in Romans 5, 6 through 10. Amen. Amen. Praise and grace to Father, and we thank you today for another opportunity to praise and glorify your holy name. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, for your grace and mm -hmm. your mercy. Mm -hmm. We ask, O oh God, that you forgive us our sins. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us in the way that you have us to go. Lord, we just uh, are looking forward to every step we take uh, in your grace and your mercy. Mm -hmm. Every move that we make that you lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. God, we just ask your blessings on this Bible study today. Lord, uh, let it be fruitful and, and touch hearts and minds in a way, God, that only you can. Maybe just a word or a thought, oh God, can change the direction of somebody's life. God, we pray for those on our sick list and shut in list. God, we know that you are healed. You're the great physician. You still ain't the heat. And God, we just ask that you uh, send your blessing on all your saints, oh God, uh, as they have so many prayer requests and so many prayer needs. We all stand in the need of prayer. Mm -hmm. and we can stand all day and the rest of our life just praying, God, for your mercy and praying for your healing and praying for your blessings, oh God, and praying, oh God, for your direction, your instruction, and even your correction. God, we need you. And we need to be made whole, Heavenly Father. So let this word do what is what you designed it to do, the power that's in this word. Let it do what it's designed to do, to go forth and, and with that power. You said it's active and living, sharper than any double-edged sword. Yes. And so we praise you today. And we glorify and magnify your holy name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. All right. Amen. And thank God. And thank you, Pastor, for that prayer. Thank you, Brother Jim, for that scripture. And thank you all for joining us as we look into 2 Corinthians, uh, that ninth chapter, that 13th verse. We'll start there. I have the King James Version, but whatever version you have, uh, let's all just study together. Amen. And it reads, while by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribu distribution uh, unto them and unto all men. Amen, amen, amen. He said we glorify God in this ministration. Are you glorifying God in what he's done for you today? We are supposed to glorify God in everything we do. We are supposed to lift up his name, everything that is good, amen, that we should glorify him and not the bad things. But we need to glorify God for God. Paul is letting us know that he is the one that uh, given them the ministration and given them the ministry to do what they're doing. God has given you a ministry to do what you do. He says, for the generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Jesus Christ. There's a gospel of Christ that we must share with everyone, the gospel and the life, that good news of Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. The gospel of Christ is that good news that you can be saved, that God has made a way for us all today and forevermore. God has already paid the price. And we need to uh, glorify him, amen, for what he's already done. And we need to understand that it's beneficial for us to do this, amen, to glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to let him know that, Lord, we thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. As we lift up the name of Jesus, in Matthew uh, 5 and 16, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Look at that. Glorifying your heavenly Father who is in heaven. 
Amen. Knowing that he sees us and that light that, that God has given you shining through the cracks, our cracks. And we need to glorify him. No matter what you're going through, you can still find time to glorify God. Amen. There's nothing too big for God. And we need to glorify him in all, all good things. I'm going to say not bad things, but the good things in what we do. And Hebrew 13 and 16, it says, um, by him, oh no, excuse me, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his, no, 13, 16, I'm reading the wrong verse, excuse me, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. There's a sacrifice, that sacrifice that Paul talks about in Romans, um, 12 and 1, that's the unit that we become living sacrifices, amen? Uh, a living sacrifice unto God, right? And that's what we're supposed to be. We don't sacrifice bulls and goats and sheep anymore. We are that sacrifice, amen? Because we're doing the work of the Lord. We're sharing the good news and we're glorifying God when we do those things. It says here in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable. You got it? Reasonable. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. Following God. Letting him lead and guide each and every one of us. And we need that leading in God each and every day. I know I do. You might not, but I do. I need it every day. And I'm so thankful that we have a God that wants to lead, that wants to guide us, that still cares about us. And we need to understand that God loves us. And so we need to hold on uh, to uh, the gospel of Christ. It's the good news when people hear it. They might be rebellious at first, but when you tell them about what Jesus has already done, oh, come on, somebody. When you tell them that Jesus has already paid the price for you, for us all, in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, that whosoever, that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, you are whosoever, they are whosoever, they can be saved. Because the price has already been paid. Yeah. All you got to do is receive the free gift. Free unto us. It wasn't free to Christ. But it's free to us. Because he wants us to be in his kingdom. And so we need to understand that we are to glorify God. Glorify the son. Go, glorify uh, his son and what he's already done. Amen. And so we just continue. Uh, whatever ministry God has put you in. Continue to share the good news. Amen. If you're going to be singing and praising God, praise him from your heart. Let, letting him know that, God, you know, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, because you've given me the voice to sing. You didn't do this on your own. If you're teaching, thank God. Have the Holy Spirit help you teach and guide and lead others to Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's go on to verse 4 here, 14, excuse me, Jesus. It's, uh, and it says, and by their prayer for you, which long after you, uh, for exceeding grace of God in you. Oh, hallelujah. That's, man, that's powerful. He says, and the prayer for you. Paul is letting us know that, hey, we will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given to you. That's why prayer is so important. If you don't have a prayer life, get one. And it's easy, it's just talking to God. You run your mouth anyway, you might as well be talking to God while you're doing it. God has put so much in us and he wants to hear from each and every one of them. I'll pray for you, but God truly wants to hear from you. Open your mouth and say something. We sing a song here saying that. Open your mouth and say something. You got to say something unto the Lord. Amen. You need to just say, Lord, thank you. 
Thank you for another day's journey, a day that wasn't promised to me. Lord, thank you for keeping me clothed in my right mind. Lord, thank you for providing me with shelter. Lord, thank you for providing me with food. Lord, thank you for giving me the help. Lord, thank you, oh God, for mending my broken body. Lord, thank you for healing my broken mind. Just thank you, Lord. It's all about talking to our Lord and Savior. See, I got so many thank yous in him right now. I just want to go off on it because prayer is talking to the one who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may think or ask. It's the power of God unto salvation. It's God's wonder working power that God loves us and that prayer to him. Okay. A deep affectionate prayer where you're just opening up to God. It's all about praying. All about praying. He's torn down the veil. So we may enter in, amen, unto the holy of holiest. And you're able to have a relationship and a talk with Jesus, amen? Because he's been given all authority in heaven and on earth by the heavenly father. And he sat down at the right hand of the father. He's sitting there right now. And so God wants you to know that, hey, I'm still listening to you. I still got you in the palm of my hand. I'm still waiting for you to call on me. Not me, but God. And so he wants you to call on him. You call everybody else. You, you don't want no text. He wants to hear you say something. And so that exceeding grace that God has given each and every one of you, and me too, an overflowing grace, God's grace. Oh, are you grace by God's grace? Blessed by God's grace? Yes, you are. And it says here that, um, and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Exceeding grace of God in you. Oh, hallelujah. I just, it's just so much running through my mind as uh, we are to just praise God, thanking him. His amazing grace. How sweet, how wonderful is that grace. Don't forget what God has done for you. Don't forget what he brought you through. Don't forget that he's carrying you even today. Don't ever forget what God's grace has done for you. Meaning we got to give up some things, guys. You have to give up some things. Paul says it in, um, I think it's Romans. Uh, yeah, Romans chapter 6, when somebody asked a question, it says here, first we're going to go Romans 5 and 20, um, 20 through 21, and it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where, where sin abound, grace did much more abound. That as, verse 21, that as sin has reign unto death even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by jesus christ our lord and then paul responds and goes what shall we say then verse uh, chapter 6 of romans chapter 6 verse 1 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein know ye not that so many of us were baptized into jesus christ were baptized into his death well grace abounds we are not to continue in the same sin we are to give up that and start walking the light that god has already ordained for you to walk Amen. It's already been written. Everything God wants you to do has already been written. It's for us to go to God in prayer and ask God to continue to shape us and mold us into who he would have us to be. It is for us to continue to go to God and ask God to put us back on that potter's wheel. It is up for us to continue following God, to do his commandment the best that we can. God knows us. God knows we're going to rumble, tumble, and fall. But God is ready to pick us up. 
when we repent of our sins. And so we need to continue to understand that God's exceeding grace, oh, Jesus Christ, his exceeding grace, his amazing grace is all there for us. And so we don't need to be caught up in this world of sin. Look how many people are getting uh, told on right now in the wood, Hollywood. All kind of craziness going on. It's been going on, but now they're being exposed. And, you know, it's, it was bound to happen. As my mama used to say, whatever you do in the dark, it's going to come out in the light. And we didn't even have cell phones back then. But it'd be at your house by the time you got home. And you talking about cell phones. Shoot, I don't know how that worked, but look, them landlines were working real fast. And so you always had that exceeding grace that God has given you. You know, God has given us all that exceeding grace. And so he says, the prayer, the prayer for you, Paul writes, and by their prayer for you, you got to pray for other people. You got to pray for other people when they tell you that there are somebody don't love them. Pray for them. When they're sick, pray for them. When their mind is confused, pray for them. Right then and there. Don't wait while I'll pray for you when I get. No, pray for them right then. Watch the Holy Spirit move. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you every day. Because we know that God has given us the Holy Spirit, those who've been born again. He says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send another. And that's the Holy Spirit. We know that he who is in us is greater than he that's in the world. That's the Holy Spirit. He's greater than he that's in the world. He's greater than the presence of this world. The God of this world. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. And so we need to understand that we need to continue to pray for one another. You don't know what somebody's going through, but that prayer Oh, that sexual fervent prayer of a righteous man, righteous person, availeth much. And your prayer could be the prayer to get through. Your prayer. And so we need to be pray for, prayerful, amen? I can't help but talk about prayer because I love to pray. But it's God exceeding grace that when he answers those prayers. And then when you pray, you know, don't doubt. When you pray, expect expect an answer god will answer you so that means you got to be watchful you got to have your ears open your spiritual ears your spiritual mind got to be right with christ you got to be prepared to do what's right and prepared to move in the right direction that god is leading you wow there's a lot in there and so we need to understand that Paul is talking to them because God loves a cheerful giver. This is still about them giving. This is still about them uh, have gotten their resources together. It's still about Paul has already sent the brethren to them to receive uh, the offerings in Macedonia. The, the, it, they, they had a zeal for wanting to give. This is all based on this, and, and Paul is closing it now. Paul is closing it now with, Hey, I, the brothers are on their way. Thank God. Pray for them as they come journey across the water. Pray for them as they're flying over here to visit you. Pray, pray for them as they're driving on the freeway. Pray for them and expect God's exceeding grace, the exceeding amazing grace. I can't use the amazing grace of God. Oh, how sweet it is. His amazing grace unto you unto you that amazing grace that saved us all this is just a, just the tip of the iceberg of what god wants to do for you in your life and so we need to continue to pray for one another we need to know expect to hear an answer from god i do all the time and then when he answers i, I give him a big thank you hallelujah you did it again <laughs> i'm just saying what i do you did it again because <laughs> it ain't nothing too big for God. Amen. He's bigger than any life situation. He can take a body part and put it in another person and mend them up, sew them up like they never had a scar on them. Well, they got the scar, but <laughs> oh yes, I'm sure about that. I've had my my, my uh, surgeries and stuff and 
you know, he's taking a body part from me and put it in another area and it works just fine. And I thank God for that. That's that amazing grace of God. He didn't have to do it, but he did it because he loves me. It's an unconditional love. And I just thank him because he answered the prayer. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And so we need to uh, know that Paul is letting them know that uh, we need to be prepared to give. And I know you're going, why is he always talking about giving? Because you can't be God and give. And who's the greatest giver there is? I'll wait. Text it in right now. Go ahead. Fill it up. Jesus, the greatest gift he gave you was an eternal life. You can't top that. I don't care how much money you got. You will never be able to top God. So God is the greatest giver there is. But he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And so we need to give back to what he's already done. He's already set it up for us. All we got to do is receive it and believe him. Amen. And so Paul is letting them know that, hey, you know, the, the brethren are on their way. And I, there, there's been a zeal, zealous, zeal, oh Lord, <laughs> making a new word. There's been a zeal, there you go, a zeal, a zeal to give, a, a spiritual sowing, you know, in other words, uh, and God's divine ability to make sure everything is working out well. Um, there's spiritual growth in all of this, all of this, because you took a people who did not know God, just like he took us, who did not know God. And now look what he's doing, how he's working in our lives, constantly. And he wants to be a part of our life. That, do you hear what I'm saying? He wants to be a part of you. He wants to be in your life. Whatever you do, God said, I want to do too. I want to watch over not whatever you do, but he wants to be a part of your life to lead and guide you so you don't hurt yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because we love to hurt ourselves and then we want to blame God. Amen? So let's not blame God. Let's just praise God and just lift up his holy name and let other people know that this is God that saved me. God the one that mended me. God is the one that made a way out of no way. And he's still doing it today. You think God stopped? Because you got through one little episode? God goes, that was nothing. Come on. That was a light affliction. Give me the program. Come on. Follow me. And so that's what we have to do. We have to follow Christ. Because there are always divine appointments for you that God has for each and every one of us. A divine appointment for you to tell somebody about Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. I do it all the time. I love it. I get a little excited. I can't even stop myself sometimes. Because I love telling and sharing the good news. What is the good news? The gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ. And so we need to share the good news that, hey, you know what? I know you tried everything in this world. I know when Pastor used to tell us that when I first got here, you tried everything in this world. Look what that got you. Why don't you try Jesus now? Because, you know, and I love when uh, uh, Brother Billy Banks said, uh, we keep digging a hole and we keep digging it deeper because we can't dig our way out. But God can reach in and pull you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can he not? Amen. And so he can just continue. To, we need to continue to glorify him and continue to pray to him, continue to let everybody know that there is a God in heaven that loves us with an unconditional love, that his amazing grace is what has got us into this situation where we are able to come and praise him, to learn more about him. Jesus says, learn of me. And I want you to learn of me right now. He says, learn of me. All of those who uh, are heavy laden and heavy burdened. As he says in um, Matthew, that 11th chapter, uh, and the 30, 20, excuse me, 28 through 30. He tells us all, Matthew, that 11th chapter, 28 through 30, he says, 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are is light. And so we have a God who consciously tells us what? Come to me. You're laden down with worry. You're laden down with uh, depression, whatever is holding you back. He says, you need to come to me when you feel that way. I'm right here. I ain't never left you. He said in his own word, I'll never leave nor forsake you. God hasn't left us. We forget that we need to call on the one who's able to do exceedingly abundant above that we may, uh, uh, seem exceedingly abundantly above all that we may think or imagine because it's God who's able. He's the one that pulls us out of darkness. When we try to go back to those old haunts, God goes, no, I'm not going to allow you to do that. I'm not going to allow you to do that. And so I thank God because he tells us to learn of him. Learn. We've learned so much stuff in this world. But yet we haven't learned of our true living father, our heavenly father who we say we glorify, who we say we love, who we say, I, I thank you, but have you really learned of him? Are you looking for someone else to do it for you? Because if you're looking for someone else to do it for you, you might get another doctrine. That's why it's good for you to read this word of God. That's why it's good for you to be in a Bible study. It's good for you to open that Bible up and just read a passage and then ask the question of it. Lord, what are you saying to me? It's okay. God, God got an answer for you. He's got an answer. And so we need to understand that we need to be in a Bible study. We have Bible study on Thursday night, 6 o'clock, 6.30, excuse me. Come on down. We'd love to have you. We're starting to fill up the room again. And so we need to continue to just uh, study the word of God. And we take our time with this word. This ain't no speed reading. Even if you speed read it, you're going to have to read it again to get some better understanding because he says, learn of me. And you ain't going to learn it just by reading it one time. I read the whole Bible. Yeah, okay, good. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Oh, let's read it again. Because I'm telling you, the devil can't get in there and train words on You'll be reading something and you'll be like, that didn't even sound right that came out my mouth. And the spirit in you will let you know that I wasn't right. Read it again. And so we need to learn of God. We need to learn that his amazing grace is always there for us. Amen. I don't know how I got there, but I, I'm glad God, God took me there. So make sure you come on down for a Bible study. Uh, Brother Jim Kenny will be there, so I'll be there. And a whole bunch of others will be there. So come on in. Grab a chair, sit on down. Love to have you. And continue to tune in on Sunday morning. Don't stop there. Study during the week. Take your uh, daily devotion. Open up the Bible. Start reading it. And learn what thus says the Lord. In verse 15, it says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Oh, my God. What unspeakable gift is this is? His thankfulness. Thankfulness he's talking about. That we need to be thanking it, thanking God. You know, for what he's done. What he's done. It's not about what I've done. I've done nothing. All I did was uh, receive the gift. Ooh, excuse me. Thank God for this gift. Too wonderful for words. Yeah. That's in the translated version. New Living Translation. Thank God for this gift. It's just too wonderful for words. <laughs> too wonderful for words. I, I ain't even got nothing. It's too wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. For this gift. I thank you, Lord, for the gift that you've given each and every one of us, Lord. A gift, Lord, that where we can praise and worship and, and come to you. 
And that's what we need to do. We need to thank God, that amazing grace that he's uh, departed upon each and every one of us. There's still room at the cross for everyone. Amen. I know the songwriter said there's room for one more, but God says, I so love the world. I so love the world that I gave. Meaning he's given all of this. He did it before the foundation of the world. He knew he, he, he adopted us. So God already knows who's going to come to him. So let's surprise. Let's everybody come to God. Amen. Let's everybody just say, you know what? I'm going to just turn my life over to Jesus Christ today. The time is right now. The time is right now. Come on down to Community Baptist Church and, and give your life to Christ. Or you can do it right there in your home right now. You can do it right now. Just ask God to come on in. He stands at the door and knock. He knocks at your heart. He says, if you sup, I will sup with, I would, if you open the door, I will sup with you and you with me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's still knocking at your heart if you haven't received Christ. Even if you've turned your bike on and he says, turn back around and come on back home. Because God loves us so much. And he wants us to be uh, Jesus. He wants us to be in his kingdom. Too wonderful for words. Oh man, that's a sermon right there. Jesus Christ. You know, it's just unspeakable. Uh, See, it just ties me up when I, I can't even speak about it right now because he is the gift that he's given us. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we want to thank you for joining us today for this Sunday Bible study. Paul is letting them know that the givers are on their way, the, the, the brethren are on their way. The amazing grace of what God has already done. He loves a cheerful giver. We need to continue to give unto the Lord. We, and we have an abundant thanksgiving that we need to give unto the Lord. God said, I come to give you life and life that, so that you may have life more abundantly. A life that's more abundant. He says, hey, I got more to give you than you, you, you think you got, but you got to come to me. And then we need to pray unto God, amen? We need to understand that God and his amazing grace, he made a way out of no way for each and every one. Do you know God works in the impossible, allowing you to do the possible? He does. Amazing. A gift. Too wonderful for words. Oh, hallelujah. And so we want to thank you for joining us this morning here at Community Baptist Church for another Sunday Bible study. We'll see you again, God willing. Uh, make sure you make it down this Friday, a good Friday service at 6 p.m. Um, the mighty men of God will be bringing the word to seven utterance of Christ. And so just come on down and uh, join us for that service. Uh, and I know you had your coffee, your toast, your bacon, and your eggs. So now it's time to get dressed up and come on down here, cleaned up a little bit. And praise the Lord with us this morning, amen. And so we'd be glad to see you here today. Um, and so I want to say thank you. Lord, I, got, I can't be too wonderful to speak. I got a lot on my mind. I got to stop right now. And so uh, just come on down. Join us for this morning's service at 1045. We'll start praising and worshiping God. And then we'll just praise him all day long, amen. And so let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we want to say thank you, Lord, for just blessing us with the word, our word, oh God, uh, too wonderful to even speak, Father God, because Father God, you do the impossible to allow us to do the possible. We thank you, Lord, for entering in into this Bible study, Lord. We hope that something was said or done to encourage them in the Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you again as you continue to bless us, Lord. Bless our pastor, Lord. We lift them up to you. Uh, bless everyone that's on their way, Father God, and we know, Father God, that uh, you are doing a, a marvelous work in each and every one of us. Thank you for pulling us out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Lord, let us just continue to praise and worship you all day long. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. And we'll see you again for another Sunday Bible study.